Welcome, everyone. It is showtime. To I want to welcome all of our peerless realtors and investors from across the country. Today is Thursday, July 15th, 2021, and this is Mastermind Podcast number 336. Both of my partners are running a little bit late today. We do have one in the queue. We do have room for more. Just wanted to start uh, by thanking you, all of you, really, for a really good response to the new our new programs. Bruce, I just heard you pop in there. I was just going to tell him thank you for supporting our, our new programs. We were hopeful they'd be valuable, and obviously they are to you. Bruce had shared with me that I think he has about 40 people in the ISA program. He's got about 70 in the wait list. And one thing I think that pleasantly surprised him was about 90% of the people he's talking to are signing up for it. Is that a pretty oh, good summary, cool. Bruce? Any, anything you want to add? Yeah. yeah. So the, the 70 in the wait list, those are you guys that have uh, either been waiting on a call from me or you, you're registered for one of the ISA Q&A sessions. So if you're not registered for one of those or you're waiting on a call from me, register for one of those. We are getting to everyone. But we've got 40 people that have have committed and are in the uh, in the process of having their, their first interviews with ISA start today. And it's unbelievable. I thought maybe 30 or 40 percent of those that looked at the program would sign up. It's 90 percent of you guys. So I, I think that this is just going to be an incredibly um, beneficial option to a lot of you in your business, whether you're just looking for a little extra support, someone to help make your calls with you, or maybe you're super busy and want someone to weed through weed through the bad numbers, weed through the people that the, the no answers, and just do that for you and turn over warmer leads for you. That's that's the ultimate goal that we have. Perfect. And it, it seems like people do fall into multiple categories. There are, believe it or not, in this day and age, there still are realtors and investors that just don't want to pick up the phone. And our program doesn't work real well. You'll do okay with the mail. It amazes me how many people have been with us for years and just rely on the mail. But you're not going to have nearly, if you're in a competitive market, you're probably not going to survive on mail alone. If you're not in a real competitive market, you may be able to get a decent ROI, but probably 10% of what you could get if either you or someone else picked up the phone and followed those letters up with a call. So ideally, we would like for you guys to use these people to to put a elimination service to eliminate the ones that aren't ready, aren't serious, and put good people, motivated people in front of you to call. But we know there's a certain percentage of you too that just aren't going to pick up the phone, and that's okay. It's it's almost as good at just having these people call. The ideal situation is if you also call, but if you're not going to do it, you're not going to do it. Then use our ISAs to at least get you to the appointment stage where they say, okay, I'm ready to meet with you, whether it's on phone, on the phone or in person. And, and either way, your, your conversion rate is going to be much higher if you make the calls, whether it's you, whether it's someone else, or whether it's a combination of the two. Anything else you want to add to the ISA program, Bruce? Any no, other comments? Or nope, if yet. someone, uh, yeah, if someone does want to, <laughs> just know you're going to, you're probably going to be two to four to six weeks out before we can get you started. But again, just send an email to Bruce or support at all the leads.com. Bruce at all the leads or support at all the leads and we'll get you on Absolutely. the, in the list. Oh, better way. Yep. Go ahead. Absolutely. No, that, no, that's, that's fine. We'll, we'll get you in the list. We'll send you a uh, Google form. You'll fill it out. It'll go on the team. We'll give you updates on where we are with, with ISAs for interview. It's not six weeks. It's really two, three weeks at, at most. So you're not that Good. far out, but you are two or three weeks out. Perfect. Yeah, we'll get in there before the line does get six weeks out. So see, I was just future pacing. That's probably where we're going to be after this there call. There you go. Bruce, anything you want to add to or any announcements on foundations? When are the next class coming up and how people can get into that? So, guys, if you've taken foundations and you've specifically gone through the dialogue training, I am doing a follow-up role play call next Wednesday for those of you who've watched or come through foundations before. I don't want to exclude everyone else, but inevitably what happens is I get people that come in and confuse those that are following the specific formula that I teach on a phone call. 
if they've never taken the class. It's a little bit, please forgive me if, if I'm limiting it to you if you've, if you've taken the class or watched the videos or something. But if you have, we're doing a role play call next Wednesday at 1. And uh, it'll be about an hour and a half breakout room, so private, small group role play with a uh, little bit of teaching in there as well. Perfect. And, guys, we have only one person in the queue. I, I don't think we've ever had one of these calls that hasn't gone an hour, so please jump in there. Questions, comments, concerns, we're always looking for two winners every week. Our, our probate winner of the week is if you have a specific probate-related win, a contract signed, whether you're an investor or a, a realtor, either a listing or a contract signed, a deal closed. And then the uh, idea of the week winner is just, it doesn't have to be probate related. We've had some great ones over the last couple months. Uh, just let us know. It's it's a crazy, crazy strong seller's market. Virtually every everywhere within the sound of my voice, certainly I think everywhere in North America. So we, what are you doing that's outside the box? What are you doing that's a little bit different to get listings, to to get contracts signed, to differentiate yourself from the competition? Because it is, fortunately or not, it's probably the easiest time in history to sell your property on your own. So what are you doing to provide that extra value that people do want to list with you or they do want to sign your contract if you're an investor? All right, we have one in the queue. Make it quick, whoever's in the queue. We only got 45 minutes. So, And please, guys, jump in there. Star six and hit one. Plenty of room for everybody. Let's go to our first caller this week is phone number ending in 9902. Rick Wilson here. How are you fellas doing today? Hey, Rick, Rick. you are a frequent flyer. It's always good to hear from you. Yes, I am just... I won't miss one of these sessions. Barring death or disability, I'm going to be here because I get so much from them, and I really appreciate your time. Speaking about that Wednesday call, I did go through the foundation class some weeks back, I believe, and you mentioned that we'll be – is that – you're going to email us on that? Is that what you're going to do, Bruce? Yeah, everybody who's been through that is going to get an email here in the next couple of days just with an, okay, uh, cool. an announcement no registration on it, so it'll, it'll be an announcement with the Zoom link for that. Okay, because the question I had was today was I, I worked on a dialogue for widows, uh, widowers, and uh, because I think that that case comes up, obviously, frequently. And so I, I wrote it down, as, and the caption was, uh, going for the no, trying to get as much information in front of them, knowing the likelihood they're going to say, no, I'm not interested in them handle the objection. So I don't know if mm -hmm. I want to do this now or you might maybe wait till Wednesday. Is that Well, I mean, we got a little bit of time. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here's here's I'm gonna give you the dialogue. Okay, and you're gonna play the okay. the widower. Okay. So okay. I'm gonna I'm expecting to know if you say yes, we set the appointment of course. Here we okay. go. Let's do it. Ring, ring, ring. Okay. Hello you answer. Hello, Bruce. How you doing? Good. Yeah, Who's not it? Bruce. Uh, yeah, it's Rick Wilson. You don't know me, but you might recall a letter I sent to you a while back. It was in a large envelope stuffed with a blue pen. But I was giving you a quick call yeah. today because I offer surviving spouses a concierge service, a variety of services, if you will, related to real estate like property repair, maintenance, broker price opinions, unclaimed property searches, attorney referrals where appropriate, and many low-cost or no-cost things to do to enhance the value of real estate. I was just curious, does that sound like something that might interest you? You know, I got to tell you, I, I'm so swamped. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think so. I'm pretty good right now. Okay. Well, I appreciate you taking a moment with me. It sounds like you're not looking for help at this time. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's that's right. Okay. So uh, let me ask you this real quick. If you ever change your mind, do you think it'd be okay for me to stay in touch? Yeah, sure. Sure. I, I don't okay. see any problem right. with that. Okay. Well, before I let you go, man, what the future might look for you look like for you, say, in 6 to 12 months when you have the probate all wrapped up and your now mind is in a different place, of course. Are you leaning towards staying put or might you consider selling, selling the home? Well, I'm probably my kids are after me to move to uh, Florida. I hadn't really made that decision yet, but they're thinking okay. uh, they're thinking that I'm going to move down there with them. Okay. All right. Well, listen. I appreciate the opportunity to stay in touch, and uh, I'll reach out to you from time to time. You'll have my contact information on the, on the letters I've sent to you, and uh, just so that 
I could see I have a checklist I think might be helpful. It's not in any of the letters. I'd like to email that to you. Could I get your email address? Yeah, yeah, I, I'd say that's okay. It's Bruce. Yeah, I, I promise I won't be. Uh, I won't put you in on some kind of drip email. This is just so it will be very specific information. I think this will be helpful okay. where, based on what you told me where you're at, so to speak. Oh, and no, your email fine. address is Bruce at gmail dot. Super duper. I got it down here. Bruce, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate the opportunity, and I'll look forward to talking to you again here sometime in the future. I'm okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. So right. that's what I've been doing. I'm sure that okay. I've done better on that call, but uh, well, pretty solid. All in all, solid until the end. And you okay. had you had definitely had a big opportunity to pull the um, pull more information out. Okay. But following the formula, you went you laid out uh, the elevator pitch. I'd 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 like you to break your introduction up a little bit with a question in the okay. middle. So okay. it ran a little bit, all, but for the most part, it followed the general formula that we that we went over. I can tell you've been practicing it. So throw the uh, throw throw another question in there. Ask for permission. Remember the remember what the gate is. The gate okay. is just a question. I don't know if what I do is a benefit to you. Do you think I could take a quick second and tell you a couple of the things that I offer? Where you just went straight into the offer. And it was fine. Yeah. It really wasn't too long, but I might want to break that up a little bit. And then at the end, you ask the real estate question, and I said, "Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. My kids are wanting me to move to Florida. Mm-hmm. You could have, you could have just kind of asked me to expand on that. You could have said, Florida. Yeah. What do you, okay, what do you think well, about I'm that? I'm from Florida. It would have been probably natural for me to talk about that, but I, I, I purposely abbreviated the, this. I didn't want to sure. monopolize." monopolize everything today but yeah i think yeah once he said florida i said oh really i would have said where because yeah you know, i'm very i'm from florida and sold real estate there for 20 years so I'm, i know every white place in the road in that peninsula so yeah i agree i probably could expand it on that and uh, probed a little bit more got a little bit better rapport going as well in that process Okay. Well, normally I would, uh, I think Jim and I would both say we appreciate you keeping it abbreviated because we have other callers, but I don't know if we do. <laughs> you know, there's still, yeah. Tim is on the call now. I, I was going to say real quick, we have some pros on this call. We got Bill, uh, Bill, Bill J, I will call him, so I don't mispronounce his name. <laughs> I see Mike Montoya is on the call. Anybody who wants to jump in and participate, please. But no, no one else is in the queue yet. Just hit star six and hit one if you would like to actively participate. And what was your question, Bruce? I just didn't know if you had any feedback on the on that role play call. Oh. The only oh, I noticed at the end there super duper kind of labels you as a baby boomer, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> so <laughs> that that I that I identified with right away. It just felt yeah. a little bit the the thing I like is that you're not stiff. I mean, you're 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 trying to joke around a little bit and you're trying to be comfortable with the people. It just felt just a little bit choppy. And and uh, you're, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. just the fact. Yeah, and and it, a role play is in it's an unnatural situation because you, you you probably respond better to if you listen well, which I feel like you probably do. You probably have more realistic responses to somebody you're actually talking to. But uh, yeah, I give you I give you a B for that. If I had to grade it okay. <laughs> from an A to a B. good job, right. and every time, yeah, every time you've done it, I think you've improved. So. That's a good thing. Yeah, I'm, Keep it I'm up. looking at uh, taking the heart. I mean, I've, I've practiced this uh, so, uh, many times by myself. And, and, uh, and of course, see, live live is key. Uh, an actual prospe- uh, prospect uh, is important. And I may have been making the calls. I just have not been able to uh, connect. And I've, uh, I, I know that's just a matter of time. But I've, I've talked to a handful of people, and I've gotten some positive responses. The only thing I thought I I could honestly self criticize self not criticize but critique myself I could have gone for I might have even gone for it because he seemed like he's open to it using that I think the gate that he gave us is oh I think let me think of it hold on a second it's the one where you said I I have a simple proposal to make is that it where it goes that gate oh but yeah do you mind if I make a proposal. Yeah, that one there. I probably could have tried that one at this point, mm-hmm. even though he told me he's not ready to sell or not sure what he's going to do. Would that would that be pushing it too hard, do you think, at that 
Not really, but but I usually hold the proposal back, and I want just so everyone knows what what I'm talking about. Let me let me take a quick moment okay. to to teach the concept real fast is when I was growing up on my dad's farm in the mountains of Virginia. So you guys uh, got one West Virginia farm boy with Chad, and now you got a, a Virginia farm boy in the mountains with me. Is I'd climb the fence all the time to go from one field to the other or one pasture to the other until dad would catch me. And he, he was never very happy seeing me climb the fence. And he'd always say, that's what there's a gate for. You just took, took a year off of that fence's life. I'm going to have to rebuild it in a couple of years now. And so he'd fuss and he'd always make me go through the gate. And and I treat conversations the same way. You could like bull right through a fence or climb over it. And a lot of times that you could do the same thing in a conversation. You could just keep talking and talk, 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 talk until they either hang up on you or they tune you out. But if you you think about a, a conversation gate as a request, for permission to go to another piece of the conversation, it's you're going to have a lot more engaging dialogue. And so a gate is just simply a, an ask or a request for permission to go somewhere else. So the first the first gate that I use is, look, I, I don't know if what I do is right for you. Could I take a quick second to um, share with you a couple of things I offer? Another gate is after you have, and this is what Rick was just talking about, after you have a little bit of um, rapport built with someone and you're ready to close for an appointment, you could say, hey, do you mind if I make a quick proposal? Another gate that I use all the time is, is it okay if I share why I do this? So that's the why gate. So I want you to think of different places in your conversation where you're asking permission to share different things or, or, or um, offer more details. But you need to ask permission because once they've said yes, then you've got some buy-in into the rest of the conversation. Um, So, Rick, uh, the proposal gate that you were just mentioning, I would probably Mm -hmm. wait until I had a little bit more rapport before doing that. Um, But it's certainly a valid valid thing that you could do in the the conversation at that point. Okay. All right. Well, listen, that's very helpful. I made some additional notes here. And, you know, each time I think I'm going to get better at this for sure. And I am – one last comment. I was going to say I am – actively pursuing attorneys. I think that's real important. And I am getting meetings with and I'm getting uh, some positive uh, feedback from them based on the techniques, uh, again, got from the foundation uh, uh, foundation uh, course that uh, that I took. So that's, that's I Great. see that's going to be very helpful. Perfect. Awesome. Well, we have one. We have one more person in the queue, and Tim, I think you, you wanted to add something. Oh, thank That's you, Rick. Appreciate you participating. Yeah, and Rick, before you go, one thing I'll also say is just this uh, from outside observance. The one super cool thing about using the Gates approach or pivot or the other there are a lot of other terms that get applied to that, but you're changing the conversation in a way that you want it changed to is that you're also getting them to say yes. You're asking their permission, and they have to say sure, yes, okay, whatever. All those are affirmations, and the sooner you get somebody used to saying yes to the things that you're saying, that's the positive emotion people are looking for. So, you know, that, that's good news in that, and that's what makes that gate thing also extremely powerful. The other thing I, I just wanted to touch base on, because I've got to get back off. I had to get off a call to get on this. I want to jump back on the call I was on, but I didn't want to forget to mention this. A bunch of you have filled out the uh, form that we mentioned on the last call that we had, uh, it's also in your drop-down menu uh, at the top of your portal when you log in. But if you log into your portal and change the URL to forward slash PP form, you'll be able to enter information that says you have interest in learning more about our new pre-probate program that we're working on. And if you need more information on that, certainly feel free to ask it on this call. I'm sure Bruce and Jim can answer your questions. Jim may you know, likely tell you that it's going to be released tomorrow. Don't believe him. It's not true, but... Uh, we, are, we are working on it to uh, get it done. We've got developers on it today, and we're excited about doing it. And if you have interest in doing it and protecting your county and your market for this, take a look at it, certainly without any obligation. Hop on there and fill that form out so that we know you're interested, and you'll be among the first group that we call to uh, contact about it as soon as it's out. So with that, I'm going to jump back off. I've got to, I've got to run, but uh, uh, carry on. All right, and okay. I would also add there's a – yeah, there's a excuse me, Bruce. I was just going to add also before you go. Well, go ahead if you had a question for Tim. You go first, Bruce. 
No, I just said thanks, Tim. I thought you said, hey, Tim. <laughs> what I was going to add, in the same place that Tim referenced, you can also go on if you do have a customer for probate cash. If you run into any of the heirs of an estate, we mentioned it last week, we now have a affiliate partner that will advance without without a mortgage or a loan or a whole lot of uh, um, you know detail work, uh, paperwork. They will do a cash advance on a probate. And if you refer someone to them that takes advantage of their program, uh, they'll pay you a $300 marketing or referral fee. So, again, don't forget about that. If, you, if you're interested in that program, uh, I think there's a pull-down link at the same location. Or just email us, support at allthelates.com, and we'll, and we'll connect you. Uh, all right. Well, we have two in the queue, guys. Thank you. Uh, next up in the queue is phone number ending in 8573. You're up next. Hello, my name is Kalia. I just got my lead last week, and I've been calling today. Of all the leads, I, I'm, a, I'm on lead 13 out of 60. So um, out of the 13 so far, they've been, or a lot of the calls have been on DNC. Yeah, so I haven't gotten someone to talk to yet out of the 13. Mm-hmm. Uh, do I just get those people? Are you calling the DNCs or skipping the DNCs? No, I'm a, it's DNC, so I've been skipping them. Okay. All right. So voicemails are pretty common. Really no issue. As you get more and more leads, don't. I would not advise this yet, but as you get more and more leads, you may consider a dialer. That way you can just automatically drop your voicemail when they, when they don't answer and you don't have to wait through that voicemail period. But what you're um, running into is fairly common. I mean, it, it, is, it is a large portion of people on the do not call list. And it's weird. A lot of them don't even remember going on. I've, I've, seen, I've seen attorneys' business lines on the do not call list. <laughs> That's just completely ludicrous to me that they would put that on there but but it is a it is a fair fairly large number of people on the do not call list what was there did i just overlook the question in that or were you had you not gotten there yet there's just a lot of people that out of the 13 so far do i just skip all those people and since they're all the phone numbers are out of service and on the dnc do i just pick out all those people and just or to all the rest of my list well so this is where and we get this question periodically it's one of the most important questions that you could ask it's also one of my least favorite questions to get because we we can't we're giving you that data with the dnc list tagged on it flagged on it so that you can make that decision in your business and uh, that that sounds like a cop out on our end to say hey, we're giving you all the numbers, but you have to make the decision. But it really does come down to you needing to make the decision as to what what you're going to do with those numbers. There are some arguments to be made that they've published in the newspaper and they've published on, on probate with the county clerk's office and made themselves available to field calls. There are some arguments that could be made there. I'm not going to say that those are risk-free arguments. I can tell you that that if I am calling personally in my own in my own business, so this is a, you choose whether to do what Bruce does or not. If I'm calling and I'm offering a service, it's pretty rare that anyone's going to get upset with me. And I don't think we've ever had any of our subscribers, those that that scrub the do not call list and don't scrub the do not call list. I don't think we've ever had anyone get in trouble. And if you do, if you choose to call and somebody says, I'm on the do not call list, you fall on your sword really hard. Uh, I'm so sorry. I won't call you again. Please forgive me. Okay. But but the, but the decision has to be up to you on what level of, of risk you're going to take because we're giving you the list with with those do not call numbers tagged and some people choose to call them all and some people don't. I'm going to tell you if you don't, you re- really need to double down really hard on the ones that are left. So really, really go after them more aggressively. Instead of calling everyone twice a week, you might call that smaller number every three days for a month. So you go pretty aggressive till they answer the phone because obviously anytime you're cutting 75% of your list out or your phone numbers out, you need to be more aggressive on the ones that are left. Jim, would you Yeah, yeah no, I would, 
I, I'll verify one, a couple of things you said, Bruce, that we're eight years in the business now. We estimate somewhere around 10 million phone calls have, have been made by our subscribers. We're not aware of anyone getting a complaint. About three years ago, we had someone tell us they got a call back from an attorney saying, my client was on do not call this, please don't call again. I, I mean, that so far, that's the extent of it. And, and I would agree with what Bruce says. We're not attorneys. We can't take a legal position. We have had attorneys tell us that when someone agrees to be the executor of an estate, they're putting it out there that I'm the person to contact. So if it went to court, they probably have less of an argument <laughs> than, you know, than a FISBO who's getting called all day long. And I would say from conversations with our subscribers that I think a majority of our subscribers, I don't know what percentage, but a majority of them do call all the phone numbers. And it, 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 it's just one of those things. It's risk versus reward and whether you want to do it or not. In addition to what Bruce said, if if you're not going to not only triple or quadruple up on the calls, but maybe increase your mailings to everyone, there's still no do not mail lists. So I suspect the people on the DNC are getting called less than the ones that aren't. So maybe be a little bit more aggressive with your mailings. So maybe send them more often and, and send them longer. And, and quick question for you: Is that all the is that all the leads you have? Is just sixteen leads? Is that what you said? Oh, sixteen. Okay, <laughs> that's a lot better than sixteen. Yeah. Good, <laughs> good. I get my leads, and so he said to make conversations, but I haven't had any yet because they yeah. all on the DMC or out of service. So it's disappointing. <laughs> but I do want. Yeah, to yeah. The good thing is you don't have to have a high conversion rate to have to get good ROI from this, and. I can't stress this enough that I still buy and flip properties. Whenever I'm looking for something, I go to the one- to two-year-old leads, and I never fail to find a deal there. So as you're getting new with this, don't forget, uh, whether they're on the DNC or not, but especially if they are, if you're sending them three letters, maybe send them six or wait a few months, and then we have a six-month letter that we recommend that you send out. Eighty to ninety percent of the people you send it to are going to be sold, but the ones that aren't, you're going to have zero competition. Chances are nobody's contacted them in months, and now they're finally ready to do something. So you're just going to have to, once you make the decision, you have to work a little bit harder. But uh, 60 is a good amount of leads, and you'll you'll start to get some deals in there if you stick with it. But it may just take you a little bit longer to get traction if you're if you're not calling them all. Okay, thank Makes you. Yes, um, and hopefully I'll make a conversation today. All right. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you for the call. We have one more in the queue. We, you're very welcome. We do have one more in the queue. We have plenty of room for more, guys. Just hit star six and hit one. And next up this week is phone number ending in 9616. You're up next. Hello there. This is Manel from Illinois. And I'm jumping right back into probate here after a hiatus. And I had grabbed my listings from, or my leads from about two years ago. And I spoke with one, one I want to say, person. It's not the administrator, but it sounds like, just to give you a little bit of a background of this group, there's 15 involved in this particular, I want to say, probate uh, case. And there wow. doesn't seem to be, yeah, it's a pretty large group. And it took, it doesn't seem like they're in a rush because this was from 2019. And the person who called me back is not the listed administrator. So it seems like uh, there's different tasks that are being handled by different people. And there's people with different parts of information and they haven't really organized all of that. So, but I did go ahead and speak with the lady, and she's not the administrator, but it seems like she's taken the lead on the real estate situation. So when I spoke with her, she mentioned that she they organized an LLC, and I guess my question is, I know that this is different than a regular sale, so my number one question would be, what paperwork should I ask them for? 
And then also the second question is, what would be your recommendation for managing such a large group like this? Because this is, it seems like they're everywhere, different pieces of information. I had to find out that they did have a lawyer on the case where she didn't know that off the phone. And when I ask questions, they're not very, I, I want to say they don't answer or they're just, it could be because they're not certain but I'm not getting a response for a lot of the questions, but we have an appointment set for this weekend. So awesome. I'm just going to move forward. Yes, I'm pretty excited about that, but definitely just curious what your feedback or what your advice would be in regards to managing everything because it's so everywhere, and then what paperwork I should probably prompt them to bring with them. If I could, if I could Bruce, let me make real t – Bruce will have yep. some great advice for you, but two real quick comments. Your case in point, what we were just talking about, a two-year-old lead – I yeah. think probably 80% of the people on the call would throw away a two-year-old lead. A two-year-old right. FISBO or expired is absolutely worthless. A two-year-old <laughs> probate could still have value. And one other thing I was going to add before I let Bruce answer, the most profitable flip I've ever done year to date, I made well over $100,000 on it. There were 12 heirs, and it was it was, it was was hectic. It was uh, a job getting everybody on the same page, but the good news is they weren't real hung up on getting top dollar. It was, you know, for a quick sale, they took about $10,000 each less, and they were glad to move on with it. So sometimes the more heirs, the better the deal you can get, because when you divvy it up, it, it doesn't make that much difference to each of them. So th those are they're, – they're high work, but they could be really high-reward deals. And then, Bruce, what specific advice do you have? Well, the paperwork is not going to be all that un un unlike any other real estate deal. I would probably ask to see the, the copy of the will and the letters testamentary to, so that who is administering this estate. If they don't have letters testamentary or if they don't have a copy of the will, then we we're going off of their word as to who the, the actual heirs are. So if they could provide those, you'd be in pretty good shape. Who are you meeting with? Is it just one person or is it like the whole family or what? what's that meeting going to look like? Uh, well, again, I'm not getting much responses when asking. So it sounded like she gave me a few days. I know that she said that she would be there, but again, she's not listed as the admin. So mm -hmm. she said most of the group, and I don't even know what that number is, would be there on Saturday. So I am just going forward with really not much clarity, and I'm going to push this through as much as I can, but I will ask for that letter of testamentary. But again, they do have an LLC formed, so I don't know if they want to... I mean, should I talk to the lawyer at some point? Because it sounds like they want to sign in as like a... LLC, but I'm not clear on that either. So I would ask for an introduction to that attorney while I was while I was at the house. I don't think I'd do it until I was until I was at the house. But I would ask okay. while I was there. I'd say, hey, who who has the best relationship with the attorney? Get okay. that get whoever it is, and say if um, if you guys are are comfortable moving forward or at least moving to the next step, it might be beneficial if I had a conversation with the attorney. Is everyone okay with that? And if the answer is yes, and of course, if you present it in a confident way like that, it's going to be yes. Then then who, who'd like to introduce me? Could you either do a phone introduction with me real quick, either today or a different day, or could you do an email introduction? And if if his primary point of contact, his or her primary point of contact introduces you, then yes, the attorney could really help out a lot. Tell you, look, I, I don't, he might tell you, these people can't sell anything. They're, they're all over the country. But so it's, it's worth the conversation with the attorney. As uh -huh. far as your paperwork uh -huh. goes, that's going to be super easy. Just a regular listing agreement. I assume you're a, you're a real estate agent, right? Is right. that correct? Is something? Okay. So just a, a regular listing agreement, you're going to sign probably the the estate name at L, but it, it might be in the individual heir's name. So that's what I don't know. Should, so that's that's where I'm going to speak with the lawyer because 
they may have some way of wanting the LLC to sign on this. So that's where I'm not yep. clear about that. True. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. I, you, you mentioned the LLC three times and I just skipped right over it. That's okay. I mean, that's where the curveball for me also comes in too. So that's why I'm like, I'm not sure maybe because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want the paperwork to be invalidated if it is the LLC that needs to be signing on it and who uh-huh. needs to be the, the authority on that. So I, I, I think, like like you said, speaking with the attorney and having, once we get to that part of relationship building or when they feel comfortable, having that conversation with the lawyer is also going to be key. But also this group seems to be everywhere. So how to be the one to navigate the the waters in regards to this. is It sounded like Jim had a little bit of experience with a big group like this. I mean, any kind of advice in regards to giving some kind of uh, navigation or direction for this group to get this going and with the less amount well, of chaos as possible. I'm, ass- so. I'm assuming that the probate has been filed. That's how you found the lead? It's a two-year-old probate? Yeah, it came from, it came from yeah. all the leads, so yes. Okay, it's good. You know who the executor is. And does the executor seem to be, is the executor one of the act more, more active people you're talking to, or is it another heir, or is it just the executor it, you've spoken to? It, it sounds like from what this contact person said, she's the executor who's listed on the probate case is not really as active. Like, she needs some help, okay. I guess. The group is pretty large, and it seems like the person I'm talking to who is not the executor is the person who's running, you know, the the, the, the ship in regards at least to pushing the real estate forward. Sure, That's but she, a- she is one of the heirs, though, correct? Okay, so all 12 are heirs, and it, it, the person you're dealing 15. with, have they ex- – 15, wow, yeah, I'm, I'm back at my yeah. deal of 12 – that's a record. I've never heard of 15 <laughs> before. A it's large a family. Uh, large family. Yes, has, has she indicated? Has she indicated to you that yeah. that are there any of them that don't want to sell, or is it just ap- is it is it opposition or apathy that's made it go so long? What would you say? You know, to be honest with you, I did not get to that, but it seems like there is a a lot going on in people's lives. There really was no rush, it seems. I mean, it didn't sound like, I I would say maybe just the mundane every day and with COVID and all of that. And it just seemed like a lot going on and no one is really taking on the responsibility 100% or even 50. I mean, it seems like less than 50%. You know, I could be wrong. I'll, I'll get the dynamic I try, when I see them Saturday for sure. Exactly. I would try to stay engaged with the executor, but go with the person who mm-hmm. you have the traction with already. And I would absolutely, like Bruce said, have a conversation with the attorney. One thing you're mm-hmm. going to have to watch out for with the attorney, hopefully this isn't the case, but he might be perfectly happy having collected two years worth of fees. He, he might be apathetic too. Some attorneys are more about how much fees they can collect than than getting the job done. So you need to respectfully have the conversation with the attorney and ask him, just tell him that I've spoken to at least two of the heirs, and it seems like the majority of the group or everyone that I'm aware of wants to sell, and it's with COVID, and blame COVID, just assume that it's not <laughs> the attorney's fault. With COVID and everything, the people I'm talking to are getting a little, bit of fr- a little frustrated, so... I'm just I'm just looking for some guidance from you. Uh, what's the best cor- course forward with this? And uh, I mean, really, all you need on the listing is the executor's signature. So, and who are, who are you meeting with? Are you meeting with the executor or the the driver that you that that you're in good rapport with, or both? I'm actually meeting with the the person who's driving with the the person who's responsible, who seems to be at least responsible for the real estate at this time. I will email her just to let you know. I will email her. I think it'd be a good idea now that we're talking about this to email her and ask if the executor who is on the the probate case to be there, to ask if she'll be there. Otherwise, I'll reschedule. 100% if you can. Yeah, hundred percent if yeah. you can, or at least at least by teleconference or by phone or or right. whatever. And Bruce, you had a you had a comment too, Bruce. Yeah. Well, I believe that you said others. If there are a bunch of people that are going to be there, I would try to get an idea of how many. Just say, hey, how many how many of you guys do you think might be able to show up? 
if they're a bunch, then that's a really great sign, a really great sign, because it means that they're finally all on the same page. And I would bet that the reason that they haven't been motivated is because they're splitting 100,015 weights. They're probably just not motivated for their $6,000. Truly. The, I would try to get a bead on how large of a group you might have. And then I, I'd go in there with a plan and try to break it down, break your, your conversation down into a couple of points, mm -hmm. you know, primarily your real management or real estate sales topic. I usually hit two or three points under real estate sales, two or three points under uh, property maintenance and clean out, two or three points under my vendor relationships. And mm -hmm. when I'm going in, especially when it's a large group, and I know that not every single decision maker is going to be there. I'm normally going to drive for the second stage of the appointment. So when I walk mm -hmm. in, instead of let's list, I'll walk in and say, if this, if everything makes sense, I'm going to ask you guys to introduce me to the attorney. And then after the attorney, we'll all come back together either at the house or over like Zoom or phone, and mm -hmm. we'll nail down, a, nail down a plan for the house. Okay. And it okay. looks that way everybody is on the same page with exactly what, everybody's expecting because I guarantee if it's eight people that are going to show up, one of them isn't going to have any idea that, that they're talking about selling the house, especially if they're all mm. over the place like this. Sort of defining what the objective for the meeting is is going to be really good. If not before the meeting, the appointment, at least when you start the appointment out, like right when you walk in, define what the objective is going to be so that okay. you're not surprised and they're not surprised. Okay. Okay. That's all right. Great. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, hopefully that was helpful. Absolutely. Congratulations, oh, like I goodness. like I said in the beginning. Congratulations on working a two-year-old lead, and please keep <laughs> us posted. And if you need if you need help before the okay. call, just reach out to us directly. We'll see. We're always here to help. I appreciate okay. you sharing. All Absolutely. right. Well, we thank have you so one, much. thank you. Yeah, thank we you. have one more in the queue, one more in the queue that should bring us up nicely to the top of the hour. It looks like last up this week is phone number ending in five nine seven eight. Looks like you're up last. Hello there. Boy, this is ladies, ladies' Night at, or Ladies' Day at all the leads. That's great. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm new, and this is my first time being on the call. And um, I want to say you guys, well, are doing a good job. I've learned a great deal since just being on the phone for this couple of minutes. And I am so grateful that, I mean, you guys are available to ask any questions because all these questions have come from different angles. And even though just listening in, I I am getting a, a few um, things on what to do, and I'm writing it down. Great. So, so uh, is there anything, yeah, so, did you just want to say hi, or is there anything specific that we can help you with? Yes, please. I just wanted to ask a question. So sure. I have this, yes, I have this prop, property that I've been looking on, and I tried to call. So the property belongs to, some, to a lady who went to a, uh, to a facility. She got sick from the hospital. She was taken to the facility and she died. And so I, I checked up on all her um, contacts and she doesn't have a next of kin. She has been half of the home for four years, but she died two years ago. And her death certificate is on the system. But for some funny reason, the facility where she lived before she died did not claim the profit, probably because they were paid. So I called the, the probate court and tried to make inquiries as to how to purchase the property since there were no excuses right now. I didn't there I couldn't find anybody to link to the property or contact or next and they said in that case you have to wait seven years. She has a tax land on right, she has tax on the property for about two years but it's still not in foreclosure years. And you said uh, that the property is free and clear, that this would be like a tax lien that, that they would foreclose because of taxes, or did, would this be a, a mortgage foreclosure? It's not a mortgage. Thing. As a matter of fact, it shows that she left from the house to the facility, and then when she died, her address got reallocated back to the property, so she, she owns the property free and clear. But the only, the only reason why it will be foreclosed on is because of the tax on it. So she has two years back taxes. And not, I think you have to have at least three years before it's taken to publish it. So it's not published. It's 
It's not mm-hmm. published and there's anywhere. No, it's and gone. there's no next of kin that you can find. Yes. I haven't seen any next of kin. I wanted to go publish it in newspapers and but I didn't want to jump the gun because I really didn't. I was stuck. I called several offices and they were like, okay, maybe we'll just throw this into foreclosure. But you know how the market is right now. It's one, one, thing, one thing real quick that I missed, is this one of our probate leads or not? Probate. It's not. Okay. So it's not. It's okay. just a, it's an outside lead you're trying to, to locate. Gotcha. Okay. Exactly. It's not even an idiot. Like the probate courts were not aware. I just called them and asked them. Pre-probate, <laughs> right. Well, yeah. if there are no heirs, then it really won't go into probate because somebody would have to initiate that. So this is very unlikely to be to to be probate. Okay. If there if there's not an heir, if you can't find an heir, I'm completely lost on how you would proceed with this because it, it really is going to end up being that foreclosure situation, and you're you're not going to force the government to foreclose on a property before they're before they legally can so i think this is a waiting game and i I might be wrong i I really really might be wrong but it's a unique one yeah the only thought i would have is put a note on the door and send a letter to the house and just see if maybe there's somebody who's keeping an eye on the property that knows somebody that has an interest in it or see if your letter gets forwarded they're both long shots but it's it's worth okay, a try so. for the cost of a stamp and put a letter on the door, and I mean you never yeah, know. So it, does it look like the grass is being cut? Is it being maintained or no? Okay, so it's on a street where the neighbors watch out for each other, and they, because they don't want roots and rats all over, they always cut the grass. They try to keep. Okay. And so if you look at it from outside, you probably think it's someone that has been lazy about cutting their grass. You wouldn't think it's someone. I mean the house. Sure. Yeah. And the only other thing you can do, like uh, Bruce said, just keep an eye on it. And eventually it'll probably go to tax sale and maybe you can get a good deal on it that way. But yeah, you can't force a probate. So, but try sending a letter, put a note in the door. And that's about the only other thing I could think of. It's a long shot, but it's I, I worth a try. That, uh, I tried that already and spoke to, to at least two of the uh, neighbors already. And- yeah. Sorry, we're not much help, <laughs> but that's that's a tough that's a tough one. But I appreciate you asking, and let us know if you if you find a solution for it, please. I will definitely. <laughs> All right, thank you. We have one more that jumped in the queue. We have a couple minutes left. Phone number ending in six six four zero. You're you're last. Hey guys, Eric Basket here in Los Angeles. Quick question for you. I I'm not really deep with investors. I got a guy that I ch- I called yesterday. He's interviewing some people. He just wants a cash offer, doesn't want to play a commissions or anything else. Have any of you dealt with Zillow offers or Redfin offers where they buy the property as is? Zillow, yeah. Yep. There there are depending on uh, the brokerage you're with, most brokerages also have their version of a Zillow or a an open door offers. I have not dealt with Redfin. It it shows my naivety, but but I didn't think Redfin actually bought houses. They might advertise it, but I've never seen them buy one. No, so Zillow, I would probably go to if you don't have an investor, I'd go to Open Door because at least they'll pay a commission. But I would bet that you name your city and you'll have 14 or 15 investors that call you and ask you to do the deal with you right off of this call. Yeah, I feel I'm. Um, up against a lot of competition. It is Los Angeles and people are paying a lot. So I rather, I I have my guy, but you know, he's of course wants to make a big spread. So I rather not lose Uh, completely and get something versus nothing, you know? Just an add on to what Bruce said, go to our Facebook group. We've got, I think we've got 20 some thousand people in there now, maybe more than that. I haven't looked lately. Kat could tell me, (laughs) but we've got a bunch of people in there. Go to our, our Facebook group and just say, realtor with a good deal looking for an investor in LA and I'd be surprised if you didn't get a couple responses. Clarify what you okay, want that's good. For. It will clarify that. Now I, I'm generally not going to encourage you to go to one of the big eye buyers like that. But but I do know I know that they'll pay you a commission and and they'll make a generous a generous offer and you'll get a commission. I would argue that they'll make you an off they'll make an offer that is more than the house is worth in a lot of cases. <laughs> so you might mean that with yeah yeah. Okay. I haven't experienced it with Zillow because they usually, I mean, they're a brokerage and they're they're you know I guess Open Door is at this point as well. 
but Zillow wants to use their agents where Open Door will will allow you to represent the deal. Okay. And typically, uh, I almost feel bad at giving that advice, but yeah, but it it might work out for you. All right. Well, okay. we appreciate Thank it. Thank you, guys. I've got a hard drop off at two o'clock, and the queue is empty, so. I want to end this call like I always do. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. I want to particularly thank those of you who actively participated. I want to challenge each of you to take one idea that inspired you on this call, go out and put it into practice, and please come back next Thursday and share your results with the group. Have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to you same time next Thursday. Take